Hello there, and welcome back to another video. This is the third episode of a story about Naruto Uzumaki when he was a mess of opposing fronts and thoughts. He was obnoxious and ignorant, yet bashful and bright. He was always cheerful and smiling, but he sobbed in his room. What will happen when he attracts the attention of Kandi Zaviki as well as his two new teammates? Will they be able to decipher Naruto's intricate web of disguises? Wait and see. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel when you've finished watching. Let's begin by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. Let's get this party started. Iviki watched his three students, it seemed to be what he had spent the last few days focusing on, make laps around his course. He had purposely put them through several different types of terrain. There was a sandy stretch near a small pond. Then through the trees, some areas overgrown with brush and brambles. Then a rocky, uneven area. It was not the easiest course to run, but that was the point. Running over less than ideal areas was realistic. The more accustomed the Janan were to this, the better they would do out in the field. It was only 20 minutes in. Already Shikamaru had begun to drop behind. Shino was keeping to his even pace, but he had not shown any signs of speeding up. Naruto though, had progressively gotten faster. Iviki had watched their progress while grading their work. All three showed good insight of various sorts on the reports. He would be basing some of his other lessons on what he gleaned from these tests. Shikamaru's was the most thorough and tactical. The assassination mission he'd reviewed had been replanned twice over with all kinds of alternate paths and such. It was very good, but lacking in room of the unexpected. Shino was brutally practical and realistic. He had not been ingenuitive, but his points on the flaws of the recon mission were accurate and his alternate plan was solid. Naruto had done a mix of many different things it seemed. He had outlined other routes the team could have used. He planned for maneuvers in the event of an attack, using surprisingly realistic ideas. Then there was the detailed plan of where and how to set up camps, complete with complex, but easily placed traps around the camps. Then, in contrast, there were very few real tactics used. Some of the things written were along the lines of don't draw attention. Just avoid main roads and keep to the less heavily traveled hours. It was another example of Naruto's odd contrasts. Iviki would have to look into the pranks the boy had pulled. It seemed like there could be some real skill there. The three boys all had more or a grasp of missions and strategy than he had thought. The Jonin smirked. He would just let them continue with their run for a while longer now. He was the Jonin after all. Half the fun was watching your Janan wear themselves out. Two hours later, Iviki finally had pity on the three exhausted Janan. By this time, even Naruto was lagging. He stood and called them back. He waited a few minutes for them to regain their breath. Take a 10 minute break. Agility training will not be easy. The Janan all gratefully sat down and rested. Shikamaru lay down to watch the clouds. Naruto sat closer to Shino, but there was still a bit of distance. Shikamaru was laying on the other side of Shino. Iviki left them alone for the duration of the break. Time to start. He intoned. The Jonin was carefully hiding his inner glee at this particular drill. Anko was good for some things and her ideas for teaching people to dodge and move quickly were highly effective, if not appreciated by the student. His Shinan were standing now, and looking at him. Agility is best taught practically. You will be dodging. That was all the warning they had. Iviki might have been in Tandi for years now, but he kept up his skills. He was gone from their field of vision in a blink. He was also using this as a test to see how each of the Shinan reacted under pressure and attack. He was, unfortunately, not surprised that Naruto was the quickest to start moving. The blonde boy turned and lowered his body slightly while backing up and moving to the left. He already found me. That's quite intuitive for a Janan. Iviki flicked out three groupings of shuriken. Shikamaru and Shino were moving by now. Still a quick response from tired children. Naruto was rolling to the side, moving erratically. Iviki would be pushing him harder than the other two. He created a shadow clone and then used the body flicker jutsu to appear in the clearing close to the three Janan. The clone threw a few more kunai and shuriken around to distract. Iviki got Shikamaru with a light clip from his shin and Shino stumbled when he failed to dodge Iviki's punch. Naruto was having to leap and roll to keep ahead of the kunai and now Senbo and the clone was raining down. Iviki flicked away into the threes again, only to come at them from behind. Shikamaru rolled to the side, narrowly missing Iviki only to be struck by three Senbo and Shino was still keeping ahead of the missiles. Naruto had taken to the trees, a logical move, if Iviki were another Janan. It was uncommon for Janan to travel around Konoha on the express ninja route otherwise known as the rooftops and trees. However, 
Anyone tuning or higher would be more than capable of following him. His clone had moved to intercept Naruto while Iviki chased after the other two for a bit longer. He clipped Shikamaru again and Shino received a very shallow cut on his right forearm. Then Iviki went after Naruto. He was watching closely for any tells or other oddities. It was already evident that the blonde boy had run from people before and dodged weapons. Naruto managed to leap away from his first attack, but the second got him. Iviki hit his back while the Janan was jumping. Naruto flipped and fell through the branches of the tree and landed on his shoulder. Iviki grimaced slightly. That was a hard landing, and it looked like his shoulder might end up sprained. Naruto scrambled back up though and kept moving. The Jonin went back to his chase and kept his eye out for any sign that Naruto's shoulder was bothering him. An hour later, all three Janan were bleeding from minor cuts and scrapes. Naruto had shown an alarming familiarity with running from people, as in plural. Iviki had set two clones after him, and it hadn't phased the boy. Shikamaru and Shino struggled a bit more with multiple opponents. Shino had shown, like the Jonin had suspected, a fault of focusing too much. The young, Aburame had lost sight of Naruto once and they had collided sharply, and later Shino had failed to notice the clone behind him because he was paying attention to the real Iviki up in the trees. Shikamaru had tired more quickly than the others, but had not fared too much worse. Deciding that the three were worn out enough, Iviki dispelled the clones. We will move on to chakra building. Shikamaru groaned and leaned heavily against a nearby tree. Iviki shot him a warning glare. He then pointed to three large trees. You will be each given a set of four weighted discs. He held up two coin-sized metal discs. They repel chakra. To build up reserves, you will be practicing floating the discs above your hand. He held one in his palm and demonstrated. The flat metal rose smoothly to float six inches above his hand. You will have to concentrate your chakra on your palm and around the disc. It is much harder than it looks. He tossed them each a set. The boys were all more sluggish when catching them than the Jonin would have liked. He noticed Naruto caught his with his left hand and not the right. He hadn't seen the boy favor his right arm during their dodging exercise, but now he was holding the arm close to his body. Iviki narrowed his gaze. The sleeve of his blue shirt and the armor mesh under it were bloody. The Jonin held up a hand to stop the three from moving. Hold. Naruto, what's wrong with your arm? He tried not to growl or snap, but he failed. Naruto flinched and the other two blinked in surprise. Naruto shrugged slightly. And nothing. I just fell on it. Iviki stalked closer and stared down at the boy. Bull. Sit down and let me see it. He glanced at the other two. You two as well. First aid comes first in training. Shikamaru and Shino sat quickly but Naruto was still standing up. Iviki frowned at him. I'm I'm fine, he mumbled again. Iviki stepped closer. No. I am your commanding officer. You follow orders. Sit down. Naruto plopped down without a word then, looking as pale as he had on the day of the exam. Iviki glanced once at the other two and noted no undue signs of injury. They were going to be checked over once he dealt with Naruto's wounds. As the Joni knelt and unsealed a large first aid kit from a scroll, he cursed himself. He had made a serious lapse here. He should have checked the Janan over before trying to move them on to the next practice. He should have known they wouldn't be able to come out of that unharmed. They were Janan, and had only been Janan for three days. Damn it all. I am the Jonin. I am the head of Dundee, I should be better than this. Iviki reached out to grab Naruto's arm. Shino was home, aching and tired from the grueling training session. He had taken care of the bruises and minor scrapes he had and now he sat in his room. It was dim, the blinds drawn. His bed was made and all of his things were in their place. He was looking over his side project, the help Naruto and figure him out, project. The Aburame boy was going to have to seek outside help on this. This had already been established in the few days he had been around Naruto. He had watched closely each time the members of their team interacted with Naruto, watched how he behaved, what he said, how he held himself. There were some things abundantly clear, things he could categorize and find possible reasons for. He listed them off in his head. He is of nervous disposition, fears people and their reactions to him. Why? Because many people appear to poorly react to him. Why? Unknown. He is skilled in some areas, more than he ought to be, but underdeveloped in other areas. Possible cause for this, a lack of personal instruction and practice with others but heavy individual study. Naruto is physically distant. Cause is most likely due to some form of mistreatment. To what extent, and in what ways is unknown. He is always surprised when someone sticks up for him. Lack of positive human interaction? The boy shook his head. He wasn't quite sure what to do. 
Shikamaru had access to family logs and other information, but he didn't. He also wasn't sure how to go about helping once they did find out what was going on. A thought occurred to him then. Do I need to know before I try to help? I just wanted to keep my team strong and make good friends. Those things do not necessitate having all the information on Naruto. I already noted how he doesn't have anyone there for him. He's an orphan. Why can't Shikamaru and I start helping now? Yes, I can start there, with finding ways to form a bond with my team and then, after we have built trust I can develop more ways to assist Naruto. Slightly more settled, the boy left his room to join his parents for dinner. This brought up another idea he'd been forming for a while. He waited until the dishes were arranged and set out. As the family of three sat at the low table, Shino spoke up, interrupting the customary quiet. Father, what would your opinion of hosting my fellow Jinan teammates for a meal be? Shibi glanced up at his son and assessed him. I see no issue with having your team here. Shino nodded. He'd hoped that would be his answer. What brought this on? You have never previously inquired about such things. The boy shrugged stiffly. His family wasn't cold or uncaring, but he wasn't used to talking about his feelings, or expressing his concern over his social life. He hadn't had much talk of friends since he had started attending the academy. I wish to cement a permanent bond with my Jinan team, and become close to them. His mother smiled over her teacup. I'm glad, friends are important, especially for young people in this village. Tell me when you invite them, I will have to make a larger meal. Shino nodded, and the conversations tapered off into contended silence. Later, as Shino lay in his bed, he wondered how life would be without his parents. He knew, intellectually, that Naruto and many others had lost their family at some point. But he had never really taken time to consider what that really meant. He had jumbled thoughts of their different lives their first day as a team, when they went to eat together. But only now, with the comfort and support his parents gave with so little prompting, did the boy feel a pang of hurt for his comrade. Shino knew what it was like being singled out. Often as a child he had been avoided as the creepy bug boy or some variant. It hurt, to hear things like that and see people walk away from you. Shino had seen people in the village do the same to Naruto, accompanied with a slew of insults and comments he didn't understand. The Aburame boy had already decided, that day, that he would befriend the blonde boy and become better acquainted with Shikamaru as well. He would have to start picking up the pace. There was no time to waste. Naruto bit his lip as Aviki firmly, but not cruelly pushed him along. He hated doctors, absolutely couldn't stand them. He was only moving because his sensei was making him. He bit his lip. The wound on his shoulder throbbed and burned slightly. The blonde boy sighed and gave up. Reluctantly, he started walking. He had to grow up, at least a little. Shino and Shika looked pretty upset that I was hurt. I don't exactly understand why, but Shikamaru wanted me to get checked out. I guess. If it will worry them, I can go to the hospital. Iviki still had his hand on his back. Naruto was both comforted and on guard. They walked through the streets to the large grey building complex. The streets were rather empty despite it being late in the afternoon. Naruto was glad. He didn't feel up to dealing with more people. Not after the past few days anyway. When the odd pair reached the hospital, Iviki lead them to a wing of the hospital that Naruto had never seen. There were fewer people here as well. A nurse walked up to them, wringing her hands. Iviki-san, what can we do? She trailed off when she noticed the boy standing with her. Her cheeks pinked, and she hissed slightly. Why are you here? She sharply demanded, still looking at the boy. Naruto flinched, but looked up at her anyway. I need to see Iviki interrupted him. I will be seeing Doctor too. Is he available right now? He growled. The Jonin was furious, absolutely livid right now, and he knew that an aura of danger was clinging to him. Who the hell does she think she is? Damn village, so screwed up. This has got to be dealt with. Naruto and I need to have words. But not until after I deal with this. This. He couldn't even think of a good enough insult for the nurse in his anger. The woman had paled and taken a step back. Naruto was looking up at him curiously. It dimly registered that the boy didn't seem bothered by the killing intent of Iki was radiating. At that moment though, the Jonin was more concerned with seeing the doctor first. Aitu sensei is. I in his office. The nurse muttered before practically running away. Iviki, sighed and directed his Jinan down one of the halls. Damn villagers. Here we are. He knocked once on the door and walked in without waiting for an answer. A middle-aged man with a mustache sat behind the desk. He wore the typical long white coat and a pastel blue yukata under it. He stood when the door closed behind them. Iviki. I'm a young friend. He smiled. 
Naruto fidgeted. He didn't know this guy, and had no idea what to expect. Ibiki sensei knew him, and he seemed friendly. He hoped it wasn't a ruse that would disappear as soon as the doctor went to treat him. Ibiki pushed Naruto forwards a bit. This is one of my Janan, Naruto Uzumaki. He injured his shoulder today. Would you take a look at him? Ibiki had tethered his anger for the moment. He wouldn't forget, one did not get to be the head of Tandi by letting people get away with things, but for now it could wait. The doctor smiled again. You're Janan huh? Sure. He motioned Naruto over. You can step outside. Ibiki moved away a step and then found Naruto's hand latched onto his sleeve. Naruto had reacted without much thought. He hadn't realized how much better he felt with the Jonin around until he was threatened with him leaving. Crap. Why did I grab him? What do I do? I can't just ask in his mind, the reassurance the big man had given him rang out. I cannot help you if you don't tell me what the problem is. Did you mean that? He'd asked. I do. The boy plucked up his courage. You uh, can he stay? He asked the doctor, rather than face Aviki. He too shared a look with the Jonin before nodding. Of course. Now, can I have you sit over here for a moment? I will need you to take off that shirt. Naruto complied shakily. He moved as quickly as he could. His arm was on fire, and strangely numb at the same time. He was tired and wanted to go home and hide from the world. The doctor hummed. He turned Naruto's arm this way and that and then peeled back the bandage. You feel dressed it? He asked Iviki, looking over his shoulder. Yes, it was at least an hour after the injury occurred though. I removed a scent bone, it had broken off in his arm. He too hummed again and looked closer. Naruto was fidgeting. This was the longest anyone had ever taken to check a wound. Um, he squeaked when both men looked at him. Does it usually take this long? He wanted to pat himself on the back for not stuttering. Progress, I guess. But seriously, this is weird. How, ah uh, how long do you usually spend here? He too had obviously noted the same warning signs that Ibiki had. Naruto shrugged oblivious to the undercurrent shared by the two adults. The now uncovered wound pulled and started to bleed again. Iviki watched as the boy seemed to ignore what should have been a significant twinge of pain. That is so wrong, in a child of his age. Iviki knew, he had seen what kind of treatment it took to garner that kind of desensitized non-reaction. He knew how bad things could be. Naruto was, answering. He looked exhausted and confused. I don't come in that often, just if I can't handle the injury. I I only stay in the building for like 10 minutes, he too sighed. Well, I like to be very thorough. It takes me a long time to assess and then treat my patients. You will just have to patient with me. He grinned, and Naruto cracked a tiny, shy smile at his joke. K. He muttered. The doctor bustled around, gathering up a few supplies from the cabinets. He too hovered over Naruto with everything arranged beside him on a small side table. He dabbed antiseptic on the wound and then held his hand over it. Now, this will feel strange. I'm going to use a medical jutsu on you. It will knit the tissue back together, but it will pull and tingle. Please stay still if you can. A swirl of green chakra became visible. Naruto was entranced. He'd never seen anything like it. The feeling of his flesh and skin knitting back together was bizarre. He wanted to scratch at it, the tingling itch the jutsu caused. The Janan didn't move though. It took only a few moments for the doctor to finish. He brushed careful fingers over the new flesh. Naruto winced, it still hurt a bit. That should be all healed in a few days as long as you don't aggravate it too much. Try to avoid laying on this side when you sleep, and make sure the skin doesn't dry out. Naruto nodded and reached out to pull his shirt back on. I'm just curious, the doctor went on. He had turned away to stow the bottle of antiseptic and cotton balls back in their places. Which other doctor, or doctors have you seen? Iviki who had been busy planning his increasingly large investigation listened closely. He too was a good man, the Joni knew. He would never allow a patient of his to be given anything but the best care possible. Naruto just shrugged though. I dunno. He wasn't looking up, picking at the edge of the chair he sat in. I usually just see a nurse or someone. I don't know their names, and it's never been the same person twice. He too huffed, irritated. Ah, I see. Well, you take care of that shoulder. And if you ever need to come back, I'll always have time for you. Naruto heard the slight dismissal and eagerly got up. He bowed awkwardly. Uh, tea thanks? For the jutsu -er, the... I guess just thanks. He flushed slightly and his stutter was reappearing. He too smiled. My pleasure. Iviki was silent until they made it out of the hospital. Naruto had turned uncertainty towards him. I can go, alright? 
Naruto was really at his limit. He had used up his quota of words and his courage was waning. He didn't want to address his clinging to Aviki. It was embarrassing and out of character for the blonde. The Jonin had scowled at him though. The boy quelled and bit his lip. How did you injure yourself enough to warrant a visit to the hospital? His dark eyes were intent on the boy. Naruto gulped and backed up a step. Iviki is not out to get me, not out to get me. He chanted in his head. He just wants to know something. I can't talk to him. He did say he wanted to help me, right? You um. I just happened to ah, uh, well have a few rough encounters. Iviki narrowed his eyes further. I see. Very well. I will see you tomorrow. Take care, Naruto. He turned and marched off. Naruto saged with relief. The boy glanced around at his position and then leapt up onto the nearest roof. He quickly made his way home, disabling his traps and resetting them behind himself. He collapsed into his bed and closed his eyes. It was time for a well-deserved nap. Anbu headquarters was not a busy place, in the usual sense of the term. Certainly, there was a constant stream of shinobi passing through on missions and quite a few that bunked down in the small dorm area. But the building always had a hushed, furtive air about it. Anbu were rarely loud, and their headquarters reflected that. Iviki was accustomed to the chilling quiet. Today, as he had the past week, he only went down to the hidden building in the afternoon. The masked shinobi teams bowed slightly to him as he passed. He was expecting his first report from the team investigating Naruto. Upon reaching his office, the Jonin had only been perched behind his desk for a few minutes when a light knock sounded at the door. Come in. He answered, alert. A pair of Anbu walked in, one in a bear mask, and the other in a cat mask. They bowed slightly and launched into their report. Sir, we have observed the mark and covertly questioned several villagers after suspicious behavior towards the mark. Bear started. Cat continued. Two were shopkeepers. Both made very pointed remarks towards the mark, and were blatantly hostile. Several things were thrown at the mark when he walked by, Iviki sighed. I was afraid of this. Do you know to what extent this treatment goes? Both Anbu shook their heads. No sir. Not all the villagers observed reacted the same. Quite a few only avoided the mark. Less than half of them were hostile, Kat continued off where the others stopped. However, of that group, many were highly volatile. One chased the mark for several minutes with a knife. The mark shows experience in dealing with this kind of thing. And from our questioning, he has been subjected to this for the last seven years. Bear now continued. Iviki was showing no change in expression. He had expected most of this. It was one he didn't expect that bothered him. The Mark left Konoha's war orphanage seven years ago and was placed in a small apartment. Upon his arrival, most of the other inhabitants left the building. There have been numerous cases of vandalism and theft centered around the Mark's home. Cat, a frown clear in his voice took up the report. When the records were examined, we found 16 separate cases of physical assault against the boy. Most were not enough to seriously injure him, but each one was enough to require medical attention. It is likely that there were more incidents that went unreported. Bear, in accordance with his mask, growled. These incidents also go as far back as nine years. The boy the mark was removed from the orphanage after the frequency increased. He applied for separate housing himself. Iviki didn't remark on his mistake. Cat had already called the mark boy. Iviki could understand why they were attached already. He might not be the most adept at interacting with children, or emotions, but he knew what it was like to want to protect them. Naruto seemed to evoke that reaction in many of the people he was around. In our inquiry, we found out that the mark was sabotaged in the academy. Purposeful inaccurate instruction, artificial lowering of grades and imbalanced sparring are some of the things we discovered. That would explain more of why he has such an odd skill set. Iviki hummed. How far did the attacks and abuse go? Both Anbu shrugged. It was difficult to say. There were definitely more corporal punishments than necessary, both in the orphanage and the academy. The physical attacks were much more infrequent, but more severe. Cat shuffled in his spot, fingering the pouch of shuriken. Verbal attacks and abuse are far, far more common. If we took in every person who called the mark a demon, we would run out of room. Iviki already knew this. He had seen Naruto interact with people outside of the academy and their team only twice now. Both times had angered him. He sat back in his chair and motioned for the two to continue. He had a feeling they'd be a while. An hour later, the grim Jonin was mentally editing his list of things to discuss with Naruto. He will wait a bit longer, he thought. The blonde boy's getting a little more comfortable with the rest of the team. He no longer stuttered everything he said, 
and he had conversed with Iviki at least once without looking like he was going to pass out. No need to backtrack. Let the team solidify a bit more, and then I can talk to him about all this crap. The Jonin rubbed his eyes tiredly and stood up. He was a busy man, and Tandi was really calling his name right about now. Iviki had to hand it to Anko, the woman could get so much more out of a prisoner in such a nice, short amount of time. Yes, some of their budget had to go to redoing the soundproofing on the entire building, but hey, it was worth it in the end. He stood on the other side of a large one-way mirror. He'd shed his long coat and was left in his black outfit. He was working tonight, real work, and not just all the stupid paperwork. Anko was on the inside of the interrogation room. There was blood, and a few other, less mentionable bodily fluids speckled around the room. The purple-haired woman was grinning over her victire subject. He suspected that she would be enjoying the company of several new people soon. He'd have to speak to the Hokage before making arrests, but he had little doubt that they would be making them. For the current prisoner, Anko would have to keep them alive until they were certain they had every scrap of information. Those who were involved in Naruto's situation may not be so lucky. For now, the purple-haired woman was grinning over her victire subject. He was definitely terrified of her. So, you still don't know why someone hired you to sneak in here? Hmm, really? She was perched on the man's lap, a senbone in her hand, rhythmically tapping the space between his eyes. The man, a missing nid from rain, was panting and shivering. Iviki had been watching for nearly an hour, cataloging each reaction, every flinch and twitch. It would be his turn soon. I I I D. Ga. No who? No in particular. He rasped, staring at Anko with a vacant and unhinged look. Iviki turned and left the observation room. He tapped the door to the interrogation room twice. Anko emerged moments later. So, boss, what do you think? He hummed and lead the way back to his office. He is nervous of someone outside of Konoha. He knows something. He shot the bloody woman a quick look. What did you think? She shrugged. I think I'll go get some Dongo. Let him stew a bit. There's some info there. Iviki let her go without another word. She was a good fit for Tandi, but everyone had their own way of dealing with their jobs. If Anko had to indulge in a Dango obsession, and a string of one night stands, so be it. He on the other hand, would be using Tandi as his way of dealing with his other job. Jonin Sensei really was too much work. Naruto sat at home, exhausted and sore. He had showered quickly after he got back. His clothes were in the tiny washer in the bathroom and he had a small pot of herbal tea steeping. The tea was mostly mint and lemongrass he had picked outside the village, but it soothed his nerves most of the time. The doctor visit hadn't been nearly as bad as he had expected. Naruto was still embarrassed about asking his sensei to stay, but other than that, he had held out fairly well, all things considered. Iruka had talked to him about recognizing his progress, and he was trying his best to focus on those things, and not the miles still left to go. He was out of energy today though. He needed a break. It would be Sunday in two days. They would likely have a rest day then, and he was looking forward to it. He absently stirred his tea and picked up the large book on seals. He'd read over the others already and he wanted to get lost in something other than his thoughts. It was common for him. He was eternally grateful to the Hokage for taking time to teach him to read, and to Iruka for helping him learn to understand bigger, more complex books. Without those two, he wouldn't have been able to learn as much as he had from his mysterious collection of scrolls and books. He picked up the large tome on ceiling and flipped to the first page again. Calligraphy and base symbols. Huh. He muttered. He studied the symbols and strokes closely. Then he got up and fetched a worn brush and a half-empty pot of ink from his primary school days. A scrap of paper slowly began to fill with doodles and clumsy renderings of the base seals. Hours later, Naruto would run out of ink and drift off to sleep slumped over the table with the tome open next to him. The next day, training went much the same, without any injuries this time. They were developing a routine. Shino and Shikamaru were worn out long before Naruto, but they frequently beat him in the pair spars. Iviki, feeling much more settled after a nice evening of ahem, PG-13 activities at the office, spent much of their day putting the three Shinan through their paces. He was going to push them to the edge of their limits before backing off and focusing in on training. As with the other interactions the team had, Naruto was somewhat withdrawn and stuttered here and there. There was improvement, and both clan heirs were more comfortable with their third teammate. Iviki was becoming less and less intimidating to them as well. The normal day took a turn during their launch break. Iviki left them for half an hour. The three boys had sat around the training ground and picked at their food. They were already exhausted. Shikamaru was almost asleep where he sat. Shino coughed, 
gathering up his nerve. He shifted closer to the other two. I would like to put forth an offer, he said formally. Shikamaru lazily blinked at him. Hmm? He questioned. Naruto had looked up from his sandwich as well. Shino felt his hive buzz slightly, sensing their host's discomfort. The Aburame put on her calm facade regardless. It was practically a clan law to remain cool and detached in public after all. Tomorrow, it would be. Our pleasure for my family to host a small dinner. He pushed up his dark glasses. Why? Because eating together with my Jinan team is a good Naruto interrupted, shocking all three of them. So, you want me, and Shikamaru, to come to your house? Shino blinked. Yes, logically, this should cause two issues with your schedules, as it is our team rest day, but if this does not accommodate your personal life Naruto interrupted again, looking confused, as he had the first day as a team. You want me to? Won't your parents mind having me there? Shino didn't move, but his eyes met Shikamaru. The other boy had a wan look. It will be no inconvenience. The Aburame clan cares little for village politics. A subtle barb of anger entered his voice. After all, logically, Aburame have more reason than most to ignore such things. Shikamaru understood the veiled anger at the attitude towards Aburame, and also Naruto. The blonde however, just shrugged and blushed a bright pink. Er, well, that is nice. I mean, um. Sure. He turned around to hide the blush. T thanks, I I'll be there. Shikamaru rolled back and stared up at the cloudless sky. Yeah, what time? My mom will throw a fit if I don't tell her where I'm going. Shino felt an odd sense of satisfaction. His plan for team bonding, and dare he, hope friendship had been accepted. Naruto's doubt was worrying, but this meeting would also start on his idea to fix that as well. He continued eating steadily. They had training still. If you arrive around 5.30, it would be convenient. Why? Because supper will be served at 6. The talk died after that. There was a quiet acceptance that settled on the group. An unspoken agreement to further their connection had been made. Iviki returned to find the training ground soon after, and they resumed his grueling practice drills. Naruto once again found himself engrossed in his book on ceiling. He was tired, two days in a row with Iviki was making him wonder if the Jonin understood their rank as Janan. But, the ideas and symbols he'd read the night before had been swirling around in his head all day. He couldn't stop processing them, even when it cost him his sparring matches on occasion. The blonde boy had no idea, but the pace he had going in the book was extraordinary. He had already read and understood almost a month's worth of study. That night, he blazed through another chapter, and delved into his other scrolls on the subject. He'd glanced and skimmed them years ago, but now, with the base from the new book, he reread each one closely. It took him much longer than expected. It was past 1 o'clock by the time he put down the scroll he'd been studying, one on combining and layering matrices, and crawled into bed. Morning dawned over Konoha. Several important events were to occur that day, starting with a meeting between four people of great influence. Iviki Morino, Shikaku Nara, Inoiki Yamanaka and Hiruzen Sarutobi congregated at the Hokaye's personal office in his family estate. The room was sunny and filled with books and armchairs. It fit the image of the elderly Professor Cage. The meeting being held was a bit of a last-minute affair. After reading Aviki's summary of his Anbu surveillance and investigation, Sarutobi had sent out a very quiet message to the three men summoning them. Shikaku had been the first to arrive, and had promptly taken up residence in a squashy armchair by the fireplace. Aviki and Inoiki arrived at the same time. The Hokage perched behind a much smaller desk with a cup of suspiciously dark tea. You all know why I requested you? The elder man solemnly asked. Inoiki answered. The Uzumaki boy. Yes. You have all observed him, and Iviki has been looking into his situation. All three Jonin understood what looking into was. Shikaku was pleased to know that both the new Jonin sensei and the Hokage were seriously invested in the Uzumaki. What I have been informed of does not reflect well on the village. Iviki intoned. Shikaku shrugged. I haven't been able to do much digging yet, to many stupid morons who think being a Jonin gives the carte blanche to run amok. His long-suffering sigh brought a smile to the lips of the village leader. But, Shikaku sobered. My son has started poking around. He came back that first day and said that Naruto was a mystery. Since then, he's spent a couple of afternoons in the family archives. His dark eyes were proud, and worried. He is sharp, maybe even more so than me. The statement was calm no pride or arrogance in it. The other man knew that it was a true statement. The Nara was Jonin commander for a reason. Shikai is likely to find out some things that, shall we say, 
ought not to be spoken. Insinuation was heavy. Iviki nodded. Both Shikamaru and Shino have been paying close attention to Naruto, subtly. It wouldn't shock me to find out that they had worked out the truth somehow, Hiru's inside. Yes, both boys are quite intelligent, and it seems that Naruto is as well. I haven't had much interaction with him since he started the academy. He has to be better at lying than I thought for me to have not noticed his behavior, he sighed again. I thought he would have thrived in the academy. I miscalculated greatly. Inoiki frowned. What have you found out? He was still trying to piece together a picture of the boy from the brief interaction they had during the graduation exam. Hiruzen waved a hand toward Iviki. My people found a disturbing amount of slandering and vicious verbal abuse has and is going on. There are also instances of corporal punishment unfairly given and blatant attacks on his person and home. Inoiki nodded. That fits with the profile I came up with. Shikaku felt sick at the admission. He should have kept an eye on the boy, for him if no other reason. How long? Iviki had a dark look that promised pain and misery on someone decorating his normally stoic face. At least six years, possibly longer. Damn it all. Inoiki stood up to pace. This is such a... a screw up. Hiruzen motioned him back to his seat. I need a drink for this conversation. He reached out and poured himself another cup of tea and pushed the pot towards the others. I have let the village council get away with many things over the years, but this is drawing the line. Punishment will be dealt. A dark aura crept over the god of Shinobi and Iviki grinned. I can guarantee you Onko will volunteer, along with several other Anbu. He offered, almost gleeful. Inoiki nodded. Some of the Yamanaka can be there to help profile and catalog data. Shikaku just sighed. Good. Iviki, have Anbu start to identify any possible ringleaders and have them brought in. Let me know when you have them. Inoiki, keep an ear out for anything else that can be used to add to this investigation. Shikaku, I want you to check through records and find out if any of the shinobi have taken part in this. A cold look flashed across his eyes. If there are any, I want them removed from their ranks. Shikaku shrugged. It's gonna be a troublesome few weeks. They separated then, each off to their own tasks. Naruto woke up with ink all over his face and a crick in his neck. Tables were definitely not on his list of recommended napping spots. He yawned and stretched before carefully tucking away his new books. He was going out today, and he would not risk anyone getting at his precious books. The boy yawned again and meandered off to shower quickly and went to dress in one of his now frequently worn normal outfits. I really should just get rid of those orange jumpsuits. Iviki would never let me wear them, and I don't really want to be that way. Naruto fingered the worn sleeve of the nearest orange outfit. He had to get rid of them at some point. They were nearly too small as it was. He sighed and pulled them out of his closet and stacked them up on the floor. I guess no one will have to see that orange abomination again. Huh? Wonder if anyone will be pleased. He muttered somewhat morosely. He looked at his closet. He'd never had much, but now there were only three sets of clothes left. At some point, he'd need more. Ninja's clothes didn't last all that long, sturdy though they were. Dirt. Blood and who knows what kind of damage from jutsu and sparring did them in much more quickly than a civilian's. Money was going to be an issue, along with shops that would sell to him. Naruto shrugged off the negative thoughts and memories with some effort and just pulled on a blue long-sleeved shirt and brown cargo pants. He taped the ankles to his legs and put on a sleeveless vest with a hood. Iruka had encouraged him to try shopping using a henge. He'd tried at one point, but at the time he couldn't hold the jutsu steady and was found out. That encounter with angry shopkeepers had made him too weary to try again. It would have to be time to attempt it though. He had used up all his ink, and to use real seals, he would need both chakra paper and ink. Neither thing could be replaced with a more common, household variety. The blonde whiskered boy was just going to have to get some. Out in the village, there were many people coming and going. It was Sunday, and the working class villagers were taking advantage of the weekend to spend the day out. Naruto was henged to look like a pale young man a few years older than he was, with grey-green eyes and dusty blonde hair reminiscent of the Yamanaka clan. He was wearing his Hitai 8 and a utility pouch on his belt. He had his money, saved from who know how long ago. He had quite a bit of Rio saved, but he had no idea what he would have to pay for all his supplies. New kunai, a pack on Senbone, a sharpening stone and the sealing materials were immediate needs. Clothes and some food would be nice if he could swing it. He had so far gone unnoticed, a huge relief after the week he'd had. The shops that sold ninja gear were clustered together, near a gym and a few restaurants. The first place he stopped in had the sharpening stone, but their kunai and senbon were lacking. 
The boy was disgusted to find that student quality weapons were a fraction of the price he'd been forced to pay for them. He just grumbled and moved on to another store. Both the other weapons he found easily in a larger store. He failed to locate any sealing materials though. He hesitantly asked the clerk at the counter. Huh? Chakra paper? Kid, I don't know where you think you'll get that stuff. Nobody around here has practiced sealing seriously since the fourth died. Jiraiya Sama, of the Sunin, still practices it, but he hasn't been back in the villages in years. Hitake san may also, but really kid there's no chance of anyone else being half as good as those two. Naruto had frowned through his rant. Does this guy mean it? Sealing isn't common, I guess that. But really, only two good practitioners in the last 50 years? It can't be that hard. He just shrugged. Yeah, I guess you're right. He checked four other shops before finding an out-of-the-way store that had a far more eclectic collection of merchandise. The owner, an old woman missing one eye, had just grunted and pointed when he asked for chakra paper. Naruto had been unnerved by her cloudy remaining eye and scampered off with a quick bow. He walked past katana and daisho sets carefully polished. Uniquely shaped kunai lined one of the walls, large fumashuriken were stacked on top of a box. He found a dusty box labeled seal paper right next to a well of shimmery black ink that couldn't be anything but sealing ink. He picked up two vials of ink and the largest box of paper, nervously noting that nothing had prices. God, I hope this isn't going to cost me too much. I might be able to get some clothes with what I saved at the other shops. This lady gives me the creeps though. Still, he carried his find up to the counter. Uh, ma'am? The woman was no longer behind the tiny counter. You found it then? A reedy voice made him jump. Crap. This place needs more lights. It isn't funny to have a house of horrors vibe. He found the woman standing in a doorway that must have lead to a back room of some kind. She was holding a paper wrapped package about as long as her bony forearm. She hobbled out to stand behind the counter again. Naruto cleared his throat and nodded. Ah, why yes. The DHE paper and some ink too. He set them up on the counter. The woman eyed the items and then pushed some levers on the old cash register. Fine, that'll be 700 Rio. Naruto felt a wave of relief. That was well within his budget. It still cut a gouge in his wallet, but it wasn't the fortune he expected. Um K. He started digging out the required coins. The woman laughed. It's been near 10 year now that I last sold this stuff. The brat that came in here bought up so much of this stuff. She trailed off. The Hokage even came in here on his lunch breaks to get more. Brat thought that he could charm me into lowering the price. She barked out a laugh. Didn't work though. Naruto was intrigued. For such an odd, tiny store, he wouldn't have thought that the Hokage would have shopped here. He handed over the coins and the woman deposited them in the register. He reached out to gather up his purchases when she smacked his hands out of the way. Hold your horses boy. No customer of mine will walk out without their crap wrapped up proper. Naruto just blinked his henjet eyes and shrugged. You're okay? The shopkeeper dug out sturdy brown paper and easily cut a sheet of it. His box of paper was set in the middle, then the vials of ink were wrapped and set on top. Then the paper went over all three things, secured by packing tape. The woman pushed the wrapped package across the counter, but kept her hand on top. You, you know I can see through genjutsu and the like, brat. She commented casually, her voice still thin and aged. Naruto felt like his blood froze and burned at the same time. He backed up a step feeling his pack of senbone tucked against his thigh under his pants. It was his emergency stash, his comfort. She's an old woman, I can't hurt her. But but what if she comes after me? I mean, looking at this shop and her, she has to be some kind of fighter. I don't give a rip about them idiots out there. She jerked her chin towards the front of the shop and its windows. In my shop, so long as you pay your bill, I could care less who you are. She shoved the parcel closer to him. Naruto saged with relief. Thank you so much the woman huffed and tossed the long thin package at him. The boy caught it easily. He looked down at it and then back up at the woman. Um? You take that crap with you too. Some nutjob ordered it and never came to pick it up. I can't have it crowd in my shelves. Naruto was feeling decidedly unbalanced. The hell is her deal? I guess she doesn't mean me harm, but what is she doing? Throwing stuff at me and insisting on wrapping everything up. And why doesn't she just resell it if someone didn't pick up their order? He fingered the old package. Ah, uh, so sh should I pay you for the woman waved away his question. The moron paid for it. Get it out of my shop. It's been collecting dust for years. I want it gone. Naruto just shrugged and picked up his own purchases. He bowed shortly and scurried out of the shop. 
He was eager to go home now. Close could wait for another day. He'd had enough of people for today. Iruka Sensei had told him to make sure to take time to rest when his team wasn't working. He had to go back out to meet with Shino and Shikamaru for dinner, so he would be holing up in his apartment for the rest of the morning and early afternoon. After he'd gotten back home, Naruto had dropped the henge. The relief from a constant struggle to hold the jutsu was enough for him to almost wish for a quick nap. The draw of his new supplies and trying out a seal for the first time overrode his tiredness. He carefully opened up the box of sealing paper and lifted out one of the thin slips of paper. It was almost translucent, but it felt tough, almost like fabric. The ink was left closed for right now. He was also curious about the extra package the old woman had literally thrown at him. It wasn't a heavy package. The brown paper was lighter than the kind on his things. It was slightly dusty. The blonde pulled old crack tape off and unrolled the paper. He was pleasantly surprised to find a set of five calligraphy brushes of various types. They were in pristine condition. The bristle were smooth and maintained their shape well. He could hardly believe his luck. That lady must have known what this was. Why wouldn't she make me pay for them? Obviously I am doing sealing, what with the ink and paper. I owe her, I guess. He found himself smiling slightly. Who knew that he could become fond of a strange old woman who scared him so quickly? He hoped he wasn't reading too much into the situation, but he couldn't help but feel like she'd been looking out for him by giving him the brushes. He set aside the larger ones, and held up a smallish brush. It had a smooth, lacquered handle in a deep teal color. He loved it instantly. He dug out his ceiling book from its hiding place. The book was propped up on the low table and open to the page with starting seals. Naruto examined the symbols carefully before taking a deep breath and set a single slip of chakra paper on the table. He dipped the brush into the inkwell and started. The characters flowed from his memory onto the paper and then he blew gently on it to make sure the ink was dry. The boy had no idea how enthralled his expression was. He reached out and put a single finger on the paper and pulsed a small amount of chakra to activate the seal. He could feel the pull of the seal instantly. There was a hint of a glow to the simple seal and then a puff of gray smoke appeared. Naruto grinned and sat back on his heels. It worked. I got it, first try. There is so much I can do. I can hardly wait to get farther in the book. When looking back, later, he would be able to say, with certainty, that this moment was one of the most influential in his life. It was five and Naruto was panicking. He had spent hours after his first success testing all kinds of simple seals. Most of them had only two or three symbols to connect and were quick to draw. He didn't feel quite up to attempting the harder ones yet. He had overpowered or failed several seals already, but they weren't volatile enough to be dangerous at this point. That was not the source of his returned anxiety. He had glanced up at the repaired wall clock, and it had reminded him of his acceptance of Shino's offer the previous day. He had bit his lip and set aside his work. What was I thinking? I can't go to his house. I just I can't do it. He was pacing by now, unconsciously rubbing at the scar-like marks on his face and picking at the hidden pack on Senbon he always carried. His nervous tick was the least of his problems. Iruka said to try and give the team a chance. I haven't had reason to doubt them yet. Iviki is even less scary than before. Those two never went after me either. I can do it, I can. But what if? His pacing picked up in speed as he fought with himself. He glanced up at the clock again. 5.13. He was out of time. If he didn't go soon, he would be late. Cursing and trying to shove the panic away. The boy changed clothes into a less obviously ninja outfit. Dan pants and a blue t-shirt with a lightweight jacket and only a couple of pouches on his belt. He left the hit I ate on, and quickly strapped on his sandals. 5.20, time to go. He made sure all his things were hidden away, and left via the window. A quick trap to keep people out, and he took off through the maze of rooftops. He knew, from his many pranks during his academy, where each of the clan compounds were. The Aburame clan was fairly close, tucked away from main roads in the trees. He went from the roofs to trees for a bit before dropping down and walking along the dirt path. He was walking quickly, still feeling unsure and afraid of what would happen once he got to the clan compound. He was almost startled to find Shikamaru walking, more like ambling around a slight bend in the path. The other boy nodded at him, but said nothing. Naruto was able to soothe his nerves once he saw the normal actions of his teammate. They walked along in a companionable silence. Earlier that morning, the third significant event had begun very normally, as things of this nature so often do. Shikamaru Nara, in true Nara fashion, had slept in. It was a rest day, and he saw no reason to get up early. His mother, Yoshino had literally thrown him out of bed at half past eight. He had grunted and rolled away, 
instincts momentarily taking over. He had a kunai out and was prepping a jutsu to capture his assailant when his mother had clucked at him. DCH, Shikamaru, you can't start making bad habits. You should do something useful today. She had huffed and walked back out mumbling about lazy men and something to do with honey and ants. Shikamaru had no interest in finding out more, so he yawned and got dressed for his day. He did have something to work on today. Half an hour later, a plate of filled onigiri in hand, the boy took up a spot in the family archives again. There were things to find out, he was sure. The volume he pulled down from the shelf was an older one this time. It had been written by a great-great-uncle of his during the reign on the first Hokage. The Hokage has been spending more and more time with his wife working on a mysterious project. I don't know what it is yet. The pair of them, Hashirama as loud and lively as always, and Mito gentle and refined, had been spending a large portion of their free time studying the Uzumaki clan scrolls that Lady Mito brought with her. Shikamaru eagerly flipped the page. Uzumaki clan, Mito. That was something. He knew that the first Hokage had married a woman named Mito, but he hadn't known that she was from a clan, the Uzumaki clan at that. He would have to look up more information on her, to see if there was any connection to Naruto. He read on. The village has also had a few too many scares with the Jinchuriki. The villages that have one have always kept them close, but lately there have been more and more reports of them getting out and causing problems. Lady Mito and the Hokage have of course done their best to deal with this. Their personal project is still unknown to me at this time. The Chunin exams are planned for the upcoming spring. There will be 40 Jinanchi Kamaru huffed. Of course the damn thing would leave him hanging there. He flipped through the rest of the volume. There was nothing else significant. A few tidbits caught his eye, but nothing pertaining to his search. Jinchuriki ha, huh? another thing to research. He stretched and got up to replace the book. He decided a visit to the Shinobi library was in order. He could find more variety there. His snack finished, and waving to his mother on the way out, Shikamaru wandered his way into the village. He went largely unnoticed all the way to the library. The building was cool and quiet. He noted a Chunin walking around in a section of scrolls. Other than the librarian, they were the only two people there. The Nara boy made his way to a section on clans. Uchiha, 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 jeez. Aburame, Akimichi, Senju. There's no Uzumaki clan. Damn. I was hoping to find something more here. He huffed and moved on to finding information on the fourth Hokage. There was something bothering him about the passage his father had written about him, and some woman named Kushina. He didn't know if the two people were connected in any way, but there was something off about it. Hokage, alright. The first, lots about him. Second, third, more third, ah there is the fourth. He flipped the thick book open and skimmed the first few pages. Ah, this could be good. Shikamaru quietly slipped off to a shadowed corner to read, going unnoticed for several hours. The sunlight was bright, compared to the dim lights in the library. Shikamaru had gotten so caught up in research, piecing together little bits of information into something of a whole that he had ignored the time completely. It was past noon, and he was starving. He sighed and ambled down the street. His mind was running rampant with questions and observations. He was so close, but to what? He couldn't say. There was so much about the fourth that just didn't add up. The pictures of him were shockingly familiar, both to the mountainside where his visage was carved, and to the face of their blonde teammate. There was no information to be found on anyone named Uzumaki. Kushina was also nowhere to be found. But the fourth, there was so much to know and find about him, yet critical bits and pieces seemed to be missing. His wide renown had of course skyrocketed during the Third Shinobi War. His desolation of Iwa forces was something that still affected both villages to this day. His flying thunder god Jutsu was also a hugely notable thing. His untimely death at the hands of the Kyubi was the last truly significant thing Shikamaru had found. That was where the inconsistencies started becoming obvious. The Hokage had made a will, but it had been sealed by the third before it could be read. His home and bank account were also sealed. There was brief mention of Minato Namikaze having a girlfriend shortly before he took up office, but no further mention of this supposed woman could be found. The only member of his Jinan team still living was Sharngan no Kakashi the last of the Hatake clan. Shikamaru knew of the man, few didn't in Konoha. The only other people who he knew had a personal connection to the fourth were his father, Jiraiya of the Sanin, and the third Hokage. He didn't know how much he could inquire for his father. There was distinct signs of a cover-up of some kind. There were too many things conveniently left out or missing for Shikamaru to no notice. Shikamaru knew that there were many things best left buried in the past. What this one of them though? 
he had sought this information for Naruto. Could he should he just give up and left sleeping giants lie? He huffed. Why does my team have to be so troublesome? This is such a drag. Hey! Shika. The boy turned at the call. Choji Akimichi was grinning at him, waving. Shikamaru smiled and walked over to join his friend. Hey! What have you been up to? The Nara asked, falling into step easily. Choji gave him a wan smile. Well, I have been dealing with me team. I know it's only been a few days, since we graduated and all that, but it seems like a lifetime. I fondly recall our days spent can watching and eating snacks. Shikamaru had to laugh at that. Ah, uh, yeah. Just you, me and the clouds. Man it does seem like a long time ago now. The two boys shuffled along, Choji sharing his bag of chips as they walked. So, how has your team been? Shikamaru hadn't known what to think of Choji's team. He had no idea who Haku was, and Sasuke Uchiha was somewhat unbearable. Kurinai was a newer Jonin, pretty capable from what little he knew. The Nara was a bit ashamed to realize he hadn't spent much time considering his best friend. The chaos that was his own team had monopolized his thoughts and energies. Iviki was a hard taskmaster. Choji only shrugged though. It's coming along. Haku is nice, he's from outside Konoha. A bit of a quiet guy, but he's good and he might turn out to be a good friend. He hasn't teased me at all. Shikamaru was glad of that. Good. I guess he knows Shikacho wasn't to be this time around. But, I'm glad at least one of your team is turning out well. Choji heard the unspoken question. Sasuke. He's, well he is something. Shikamaru knew that in Choji's speak, that meant that Sasuke was another parat. The pair stopped at sat in a quiet park shaded with large silver maple trees. Shikamaru lay down in the grass and Choji sat beside him. He sighed and closed his eyes, listening to his friend munch away beside him. How about, Kurinai-san? Choji paused. She's different. Most of our teachers have been men, and so that makes things a bit different. Yuhi-san is great though. She's been really good with working with each of our strengths. Haku isn't that good at working with more than one person, so she has us do unit drills and stuff. I've gotten a bit faster, using some weights to train. Sasuke is sulky and withdrawn, but he doesn't criticize the rest of us too much. I think his brother got mad at him a while back and got him in trouble. Shikamaru hummed. Good. That one was always a bit. Never mind. He knew Choji was intensely loyal, and didn't like to criticize anyone. His new team would fall under his friend's category. Choji flopped back onto the grass and folded his arms behind his head. What about you? I was pretty shocked with your team. Iviki-san is freaky. I didn't have a clue Naruto was that good either. The Nara shrugged, yawning. Ha. Well it isn't what I expected. I had resigned myself to the Inoshika Cho group. I never thought Dad and Inoiki-san would change things up themselves. I mean, they raised the three of us like siblings almost, Choji laughed. Yeah, but Ino will probably do better with Hinata and Kiba. The three of them balance out better than the three of us do. Shikamaru nodded and sat up. True. My team. Where to begin? Iviki is. Both intimidating, and very. I don't know, Ernest I guess. He quickly continued when Choji gave him a confused look. He had this whole cross me and I think going on during the exam, and the first day after, but then after listening to him, he sounds a lot like Iruka sensei sometimes. He really encourages teamwork, and building our skills. Choji was dubious. If you say so. I don't think I could handle him as my teacher. They sat together in silence for a few minutes. Shikamaru broke the respite. Shino and Naruto are different. They are both really quiet, even though Naruto was often so loud in class. Shino just has this observant air about him though. Like he keeps to himself, but not because he doesn't like attention. He's just quiet and methodical. Choji nodded. Yeah, about how I thought he was. Naruto though. He's an oddball. I don't really get him. It's such a drag, trying to figure him out. During the academy, he was all loud and getting in trouble all the time. But now it's like he is afraid to make one wrong move. He's great at some things, and sucks at others, he sighed. He can hardly talk to anyone without stuttering. Choji frowned and put away his chips. That's odd. I guess, maybe he was trying to distract people, or trying not to be shy? Shikamaru hit a grin. He could forget, at times, how astute Choji could be. The rotund boy didn't let on about how capable he was. Yeah, I think it's something like that. I don't mind him. I just wish I could help. Choji patted him on the head. Shikamaru playfully slapped at his hands. Oi. You're not my mom, Choji laughed. 
It was an old argument they had routinely. Yes, but you know you don't mind so much. I have to get going. I'm making dinner with mom and cousin Jensui tonight. I'm glad we got to talk. Shikamaru stood up with a groan. The break had been nice. He'd been mulling over his finds while he talked, in the way he often did. A few solid theories had formed, and as A+, plus, he got to spend time with his best friend. Yeah. I have somewhere to be later too. I'll see you around. If you see Eno, tell her I said hi. He waved and headed off home. That evening, Shikamaru was well rested and ready to go. His mother had nagged him for napping, but he'd ignored her as only Nara men could. Now, he was wandering down the tree-shaded path to the Aburame clan lands. There was no one else in sight, the Aburame not being a popular clan. A soft set of footfalls behind him had the Nara air turning. Around the bend came Naruto, looking a bit pale and anxious. Shikamura gave him a slight nod and kept walking. It didn't look like the other boy would appreciate being questioned right then. A few paces later, the blonde had relaxed and they kept on in a quiet peace. Shino had been uncharacteristically anxious and fidgety for the past 20 minutes. His mother had brushed a hand through his short hair as she walked by. The boy had frowned and shifted in his seat. He supposed this was normal? Friends were anxious to see one another, correct? Logically, I am only showing mild signs of impatience, nothing more. Why? Because I am accustomed to entertaining guests. Yes, clearly that is the only issue here. He huffed and got up. He could work on something for a while before Naruto and Shikamaru arrived. Almost as soon as he stood, a soft knock sounded at the front door. He walked over and slid the shoji door open. Naruto stepped away and flushed slightly. Ah, uh, hey, he mumbled. Shikamaru was standing just to his left, looking bored as ever. Shino bowed slightly. Welcome. Please come in. The other two boys stepped up onto the smooth hardwood floor. They kept their sandals on. No self-aware shinobi left their shoes off when out in public. There was always a chance of needing to move quickly. As the Aburame clan was primarily a ninja clan, their clan compound and the homes it held reflected a slightly different style to that of civilians. The hardwood was one such difference. Naruto, who had never had the opportunity to see a clan house, looked around cautiously, and curiously. He'd read a history of some of Konoha's clans once. The walls were bamboo, wood and thin rice paper. On the left side of the short hallway, a scroll covered in graceful kanji was hung. Further down he could see a pastel painting of a sunset with cranes flying over a river. A woman poked her head around a partially open door. She was lightly tan, dark haired with sharp brown eyes. She wore a yukata, but Naruto could see the telltale pouch of weapons tucked in one sleeve. Shino, you must bring your team into the kitchen. Dinner will be ready in about 20 minutes. Shino was a bit off kilter now. He silently beckoned the other two boys farther into the house. This was not quite how he planned the evening to go. What happened to spending time talking before we eat? Logically, it would put us all at ease more so than attempting to share a meal. He tried to ignore his own discomfort as he sat the others around the low table. Naruto was staring at his lap determinedly. Shikamaru sat next to him and nudged his shoulder. Hey, so. What have you been up to today? Naruto blinked, and visibly drew himself up. He could do this, it was just his team. He'd been invited. The two brunette boys waited patiently. Aya. I went shopping, and and after that I just read a book. He didn't mention the seals, feeling odd about mentioning such an unusual art. Shino nodded. I spent most of my day around the house. He was still discomfited, but he could make the changes in his plan work. Before Shikamaru had a chance to offer his own doings, Shibiaburame walked in. Naruto froze while the man took stock of the three children. Welcome. Was all he offered before sitting down at the head of the table. Naruto reminded himself to breathe and left the moment pass. Soon, there was a bit of a blur of dishes, food and slight shuffling of position. For a few minutes, only the sound of dishes being moved could be heard. Naruto was picking at his food. He wasn't used to such formal place settings and he didn't want to make a mistake. He watched the others before he even started to eat. Shikamaru broke the silence first. Thanks for inviting us. He nodded slightly to Shino and then his parents. Shino smiled slightly. It is good. To have friends close. Naruto glanced up. F friends? He immediately wanted to curse himself. Everyone was looking at him now. Shino bowed his head slightly, recalling his determination to help the blonde in whatever ways he could. He looked back up and met his eyes. Yes, we spend most of our time together, and we will be placed in danger together. We are friends, or will be soon. Shibi smiled at his son. 
The two other boys were quiet for a long moment. Naruto was floored by the statement, made with no doubt whatsoever. He felt something then, rising up. He couldn't have put a name to it, but he nodded, meeting the Aburame heir's gaze evenly. Shikamaru broke the moment. Ma. This means that we will hang around outside of training and missions too. I always get complaints from mom about sleeping too much, so this will be good, he chuckled and gained a small smile from the others. The rest of the meal passed with small talk and quiet conversation. The mood was calm and restful. Naruto basked tentatively in the atmosphere of the home. He had almost expected to be thrown out, but after a while, he relaxed and enjoyed the food. He found himself in the odd position of feeling like an outsider observing foreign customs. He'd never been around a family like this. He'd watched a few academy students share meals with classmates or siblings a few times. This was different. Shino's mother, Anyara had insisted on him having seconds and thirds before she was satisfied with him. He'd blushed, but thankfully eaten. Shibi had been very quiet, much like Shino was. The comments he did make were not at all threatening. Shino had been much more open and talkative than he ever had been. Shikamaru also seemed to be more comfortable. This was what a family dinner was like? He supposed so. Naruto had not understood some of the questions asked of him during the meal, like when Inyera had asked when he had last had his hair cut. He had shrugged and mumbled something about trimming it with his kunai. The look he'd gotten was a mix of confusions and understanding. After he mentioned that he cooked for himself, she'd started insisting that he eat more. What his hair and cooking had to do with anything was anyone's guess. He didn't understand women very well though, so maybe it was just that. Now, the dishes had been cleared and the three boys shoot out of the house by Anyera. Shina lead them to a moderate-sized outdoor dojo. A low-covered walkway with shoji doors open to a square of plush-trimmed grass. The three sat on the walkway. Shikamaru leaned back to watch the sky. T thanks. Again for uh for having me, Naruto mumbled. Shino just nodded. I had hoped, now that we have eaten, that we could work on a few things. Why? Because we are all here and we have resources to use here. Logically, we could all benefit from each other's knowledge. Shino pushed up his glasses and sat back, having said his piece. Naruto fidgeted, but Shikamaru sat back up and answered before he could. That would be good. We talked about our strengths and such before, and we could help with what we're good at. Naruto knew it made sense, he just didn't want his failings made even more obvious. During their team training, he was corrected more often than the other two, simply because he had more faults, especially in Taijutsu. He gave his assent quietly. He didn't think that he would be made fun of, neither of the clan heirs had shown any propensity for mockery. It just made him uncomfortable, exposing his weaknesses to someone else like that. Shino thought for a moment. When we discussed ourselves the other day, Naruto mentioned struggling with jutsu. I have access to the library here. I can fetch a few scrolls about chakra balance and we could all work on it. He offered. Naruto was a bit surprised to find that the other boy remembered their conversation from their first day. It seemed almost like a lifetime ago to him. D that might be a good idea. Iviki's sensei was going to have us well work on that when I... Uh got hurt. Shino stood up. I will return shortly. He was back in less than five minutes with two scrolls. He gestured for them to leave the dojo and head more towards the trees. A small, spring-fed pond with a bench was nestled in by a few larger trees. They stopped by the pond and sat. Shino spread out both scrolls on the bench and they crowded around. They all read in silence. Shikamaru tapped a finger against his chin and thought. I think, he started, still mulling over his idea. That we should leave tree walking for later. He tapped the larger scroll. This leaf thing is less destructive and we can move on to pebbles or coins once we get leaves down. Naruto was glad for this idea and he hopped up to pluck a large handful of leaves for them all to practice with. The three sat quietly each with a leaf. Shino had gotten his to stick for a few seconds before his chakra wobbled and it fell. Shikamaru had yet to get his to stick, and Naruto had three burned leaves already. Ten minutes later, Shino had scorched a leaf and Shikamaru had gotten his to stick. Both boys were sweating lightly from the strain of focusing their chakra and attempting to regulate it. Naruto had a pile of burned and smoldering leaves and a red spot on his forehead. The longest he'd gotten one to stick was 10 seconds before they burst into flame. He growled and snuffed out the latest flame before he knelt up to reread the scroll for the third time. There had to be some reason he failed so spectacularly. Some critical step must have evaded his notice twice already. Shino paused in his concentration to try to help. I believe that those with larger amounts of chakra are often unable to easily utilize small portions of chakra. Clone Jutsu, 
Henge and tree walking are the most common things that are challenging. Nardo groaned. Those three things were on his list of things he couldn't do that everyone else could. Great. I am crap at all three of those. Shikamaru had put down his leaf too. He leaned forward to look over the scrolls again. How did you pass the exam then? The clone jutsu is required. Naruto flushed now. He had mentioned the shadow clone jutsu before, but not in depth. Ah, uh, well. I I guess the version I learned is normally harder to use. I got it no problem but. Ah, uh, I have been told that it's an advanced technique. Shino cocked his head to one side. Indeed? Logically, if one cannot master an easier skill, the more difficult ones are not performed. Would you demonstrate? Naruto shrugged and stood up. I guess. It makes. A lot of clones though. He placed his hands in the required seal and released a burst of chakra. Shadow clone Jutasu. A cloud of smoke puffed out of nowhere, obscuring the clearing briefly. When the smoke cleared, there stood 15 copies of Naruto. Shino blinked. Out of curiosity, he brought out a handful of his key kaiku. The insects buzzed around, testing the clone's chakra. Shikamaru had sat up with wide eyes. Man, that's something else. Naruto scratched at his hair. Why you think so? There are 15, 15 clones. You know it's normal to make 2 to 4 right? This is. Definitely no Janan Jutsu. Last time, Shikamaru had sat up with wide eyes. Man, that's something else. Naruto scratched at his hair. Why you think so? There are 15, 15 clones. You know it's normal to make 2 to 4 right? This is. Definitely no Janan Jutsu. Naruto flushed and kicked at the grass. Do you there is so much. Uncharacteristically, Shino was choked up and wide-eyed. His kikai were buzzing languidly around him. Satisfied from only the ambient chakra now in the air. Shikamaru shot a questioning glance at him. Shino sat down hard and blinked at the clones standing motionlessly. Each clone has the same amount of chakra divided between them. And they have more than some people I've been around. Naruto cancelled the jutsu and all the clones vanished with a pop. Shikamaru was still sitting rigidly. So, that means Naruto has more chakra than 15 people, if each clone was evenly endowed with it. That. That's something. Naruto was unsure what to do now. He had never thought about why he couldn't do some jutsu, but if he was just overdoing them, maybe it wasn't as hopeless of a situation. He did wonder what the other two would think of them having more power than them. Before he could get too anxious, he was already fidgeting with his senbone, Shikamaru's eyes lit up. There are so many things we can try. I know of all kinds of jutsu that are out of normal reach. And if we could find other ways to harness it, you could even work towards creating new jutsu. Shino nodded. Indeed, my colony can feed off just the ambient energy and that will enable me to conserve my own chakra, at least to a point. This will be a great benefit to us all. A prickle of that same unnamed emotion rose up in Naruto. I uh, I guess I'll just have to try something else to work on control though. I'll burn too many leaves at this rate, he chuckled, trying to move the mood back into something he was more comfortable with. Shino nodded. I have been told that pebbles or coins can also be substituted in this training exercise. That may prove more beneficial for you. Why? Because stone and metal are much less flammable. Naruto was thinking now, an idea having popped into his head suddenly. Actually, he started, picking at his senbone more, I have an idea. Both brunettes waited patiently. Naruto had been coming out of his shell all evening, and they weren't going to push him now. Naruto kept going. I recently started learning some new techniques, and one of them mentioned that it could store chakra for a short period of time. Shikamaru frowned, racking his brain for any such jutsu. He found none in his memory. Strange, why would Naruto know an obscure jutsu? I am missing so much. I'll have to step up my research. It's driving me nuts. Naruto had made himself stop fidgeting. I could try using it to make my chakra levels more manageable. Shino, who was still giving off a slight buzzing sound from his hive, sat back down with them. What jutsu is this? Ah, well it's not exactly a jutsu. Naruto pulled out a few strips of his chakra paper and set them on the bench next to the scrolls. Shikamaru frowned. What are those? Naruto set one of the brushes down as well. Ah, well. It's chakra paper, you know, for seals and stuff. Shikamaru could not keep the incredulous look off his face. Sealing? Naruto was focusing on the paper, recalling the exact formation of the seal, and didn't see the look. Yup. I found a book on it a few days ago, been reading it in my spare time. Shikamaru didn't know whether he should say anything to the boy or not. He couldn't let him cause himself damage, 
but he didn't want to hurt him either. Naruto had started drawing the seal, smoothly and with no error. Shikamaru could tell he was very practiced, just from the movements. Shino was just looking on calmly. Naruto finished the elaborate network of symbols in less than a minute. Shikamaru wasn't sure what to make of the obvious mastery in conjunction with Naruto's professed novice level. Naruto sat back and let the ink dry. I might move it. He picked up the paper and set it on the grass a few feet away. Just in case it blows up on me. He answered the silent question. I haven't actually tried this one yet. Shikamaru bit his lip and watched as Naruto touched the seal. Fuuen. The seal glowed, and Naruto shuddered. His hand was still on the paper. After a few more seconds, he moved his hand. The ink on the seal was still glowing. Shino leaned over to look closely at it. You have very neat penmanship. This does not look to be the work of a beginner. Naruto shrugged. I made my first seal earlier today. It worked pretty well after the first couple of tries. Shikamaru coughed to hide his incredulous gasp. He believed the blonde, he doubted Naruto could have hidden this skill from Iviki. It did make him wonder just what the blonde boy was capable of though. Great. Do you think it stored enough of your chakra to help? Naruto shrugged. I just pumped chakra in until it wouldn't hold any more. I can't really tell how much it took, so I guess I'll just have to try the leaf thing again. Shino stood and scuffed his shoe over the ground near the pond. He came back with a few flattish pebbles. Here. These may be better than the leaves. Naruto nodded and picked one. Shikamaru sat and picked up his own leaf and started again. Two hours later, the three stood up to return to the house. Naruto had made some minor progress with the pebble, and both the others had been able to stick their leaves to their skin for around 10 minutes tops. Naruto wasn't as discouraged as the heirs expected with such minor progress made. Most of what I do goes that way. I learned to take what I can get. He'd said when asked about it. Inside, Shino asked them to wait outside a dark room. He reappeared with a few more scrolls. These have more chakra drills. He handed two to Shikamaru and one larger one to Naruto. Those, he, pointed to Shikamaru's. Have drills and such to increase stamina and chakra reserves. Naruto's has more for chakra control and balance. Shikamaru nodded once. Naruto fingered the scroll. Ah, uh, are you sure it's okay for us to take these? Shino heard the me in that sentence. It is fine. Why? Because you are my team, Ninja of Konoha and sharing information is helpful. They aren't family jutsu or anything of the sort. The Aburame boy wouldn't let Naruto put himself down. Oh okay. If you are sure. Shino just nodded and lead them back to the front door. I suggest that we meet up on our off days and after team training to work on our own. Naruto frowned. What about Aviki sensei Shikamaru grinned, a hint of mischief in his expression. I wonder how long it would take him to notice. Also, we have specific goals and such we wanted to focus on. Iviki-san can't exactly do that during our regular training. The other two nodded, not realizing that they all shared the same thought. What if he were to tell us to stop? Yeah, I guess it wouldn't hurt anything to keep training on our own. Naruto muttered. Shino nodded. Right, then we will start tomorrow. I'll bring a snack to share so we can stay out longer. They parted ways, each with their own thoughts about the night. Naruto returned to his apartment that night with a lighter mood than he'd had in months. Something about the evening with his team had loosened the hold his anxiety had on him. He expertly got past the traps set around the door and flopped on the couch with an arm over his eyes. Ha, huh, damn. That was something. He muttered. It went, I don't even know. Nothing happened like I thought it would. No one said anything about my manners, and we just, I guess we hung out? Shino's parents were great. Our extra training will be good. I hope, well I guess we can all gain something at least. The blonde sighed and rolled over to work on his report for Iviki. He hoped the Jonin sensei wouldn't be too mad if he ever found out the three of them were working on their off days and after training. In Anbu headquarters, a few new faces had been added to the cells. Anko and Inoiki had spent most of the day having a chat with two men who had been ID by some of the Anbu on Naruto's case. What they found had both in a foul temper. Anko had been so furious she turned down Dango in favor of beating the living daylights out of a training dummy. Inoiki had been much more put together. He had made an expansive profile of the two men and documented what they had done for future use. Iviki had spent the day on one of the other, more pressing cases that Tandi had. The Hokage wanted to keep everything as quiet as possible when it came to this kind of issue, so Iviki himself was handling it. The Jonin was somewhat relieved to be back in a more familiar environment. He was doing much better with his kids, but being a sensei was much different than just being an active Jonin. 
He was pleasantly tired and loose from his latest interrogation when he returned to his office to go over the reports from Anko and Inoiki. He was expecting the news. Both men, civilians, had confessed to spreading word of Naruto's status and encouraging others to ostracize him. Both had also followed the boy back to his apartment and broken in to wreck the place. Neither had admitted to harming him as of yet, but Anko and Inoiki had both said that they suspected there to be more to learn. They had gotten a few more names to chase down. This was turning out to be an excellent training exercise for some of the new Anbu. Iviki just hated that it came at the price of a child's safety. One Anbu in particular, a veteran, was going to flip when they returned to the village. Iviki sighed and signed off on a new Black Ops mission. He wondered if Naruto was aware of his guardian angel. Hound was back home. Konohaha even smelled more comfortable than any other city to him by now. He was buzzing with energy despite the three days he'd been traveling at top speed to get back. His brother in all but blood was a Jinan now, and Hound had been loath to leave the village the week before his graduation. He knew he would pass, and so his summons had delivered his gift, but Hound wanted to see for himself. He wasn't able to be near the boy often enough for his protective instincts to be satisfied, but he did what he could. Hound came into sight of the village walls and he picked up a fraction more speed. The outer wall was breached silently, with skill born of long practice. The guards at the gate were none the wiser to his return. Hound flashed over the rooftops and made his way to headquarters. He hated to do anything else first, but seeing his brother would have to wait. His old Jinan team would see him late the next morning. It would be amusing to see how they had fared with his shadow clone. He smirked. The dear little things likely hadn't. None of them were quite up to snuff. Hound would get them into shape soon, or eventually maybe. He continued to pass by the village unnoticed by even the shinobi that were out and about. A handful of Anbu in uniform and out noticed him. As he neared the location around headquarters, he slowed his pace slightly. The Anbu on guard outside headquarters let him pass when he flared his chakra. Bear had always been good at recognizing chakra. Inside, Hound went straight to the office of the head. Iviki was at his desk still and Hound bowed briefly before launching into his brief report. Mission success. No casualties. Target was recovered and replaced. No hostiles were met in return. Hound unsealed a scroll and set out a battered book and set of three scrolls heavily decorated in a traditional style. Iviki looked up from his report and set it down to look over the recovered items. He briefly flicked through the book. Mission report accepted. You are dismissed. Hound was staring at the papers on Iviki's desk while the Jonin had looked over the book. Hound did not like what he was seeing. He knew he'd been gone away on missions frequently, and he knew he overlooked many if not most social niceties, but this was far beyond what he had been aware of. He bowed again and left the office before Iviki could notice anything off. He kept up his normal front until he was halfway to his new destination. Hound felt his hackles raising, his killing aura was almost visible by the time he reached the nearly abandoned apartment complex. The building looked even more run down now that Hound took the time to look at it. Now that he had seen those reports, Hound landed on the windowsill and peeked in. The boy was laying in bed, fast asleep. Hound quickly dismantled the rather well-made web of traps on the window and slipped inside. There were a few books on the low table, one being the large red tome Hound had most recently given the boy. Papers and a brush were also laid out. He started already huh? Just like them. Hound was uneasy in the small, unfamiliar apartment so soon after his mission. His nerves were on edge and he couldn't calm down. He moved silently to check the door and found it warded with traps that included seals and several nasty trip wires. A thin smirk touched his lips. The seals were fitting. Satisfied that he would be able to hear anyone coming, Hound was able to calm some of his instincts. He moved back towards the bed and flipped through the open books. He had fond memories of some of these same chapters. A slight sound had him glancing up blue eyes, wide and startled, met his own. Naruto had gone to bed after a few hours of working on his seals and Iviki's assignment. He was satisfied with his day. Sleep came easier, with the extensive traps and seals he'd put up in the last few days. He wasn't aware of what woke him at first. Drifting up out of dreamless sleep was a slow process. Something, almost like a voice, niggling in the back of his head stirred him. A tingle urged him up, just a brief sensation he normally associated with chakra. He snapped open his eyes. There was someone in his apartment. Naruto didn't move, kept his breathing as steady as he could. He sat up and pulled his knees up underneath his body, preparing to move. His hands grasped at the pack on Senbone he always wore out of instinct. When his eyes met mismatched ones behind a bloody mask, his heart rate nearly doubles. Oh god, what? 
He frantically noted the black uniform and chest plate along with the white mask beneath blood and dirt. Anbu. Was his only thought. The Anbu had turned when he sat up. The man seemed to freeze at the same time. Naruto wasn't sure what to do. He'd seen Anbu from a distance, and a few times in the Hokage's office. He'd never been caught by them when they chased him after pranking. A thrill of fear coursed through him. Is he here for me? What is going on? The Anbu tipped his head to one side slowly, still staring at him. Naruto wondered what the hell he was doing. Hound was still, watching his self-proclaimed charge. The boy looked fine, he had no noticeable wounds, he wasn't moving stiffly. So, what was in those reports must have been a bit older information. It still chapped him that anything had been missed during his watch, sporadic as it was. He focused, vaguely noting that something seemed to be wrong with his actions and thoughts. It wasn't important right now though. Hound turned his head to take stock of the way the boy was sitting, crouched on his bed with three senbone in his hand. Why was he doing that? What? Would make him react like that? There are no threats. It's safe, home. Hound didn't feel himself wobble, didn't feel how cold his limbs were. He didn't even feel himself falling. Naruto watched with growing confusion as the Anbu seemed to stagger slightly. He'd made no move to come any closer, though Naruto knew that if he did make a move against him, it would be far too late for him to do anything about it. Then the Anbu started to collapse. He moved without thought. Senbo and were tucked away and he'd caught the man as best he could. The man was a dead weight, and Naruto paled at the thought. Please don't be dead, don't be dead. He muttered as he settled the man down on the floor and hurried to check his pulse. To his immense relief, there was a steady beat. Naruto sagged back and reached up to rub at his eyes. Color on his palm stopped him. Blood, this is blood. He could smell it now, overpoweringly coppery and sharp. He'd bleeding. What do I do? More panic paralyzed the boy. Another whisper, a hint of a thought sparked him into action. I should stop the bleeding, clean the wounds or something right? I mean, I can't let him die. Oh god, I have no idea. The basic training the academy had gone through hadn't prepared him for this. He had a big idea, mixed with wild thoughts, on what to do. Naruto hurried to turn on the small floor lamp in the corner on. In the dim light, the state of his strange visitor was made more evident. There were a few shallow cuts on his upper arms and a burn on his chest. Two parallel gashes on his right thigh were still bleeding along with the cuts on his arm. A scrape on the back of his head had colored some of his pale hair crimson. Naruto winced. A couple of his fingers were also broken, and who knew what else? Naruto dug out a plank from the paneling on his wall to reveal a stash of medical supplies. He grabbed some of everything and piled it on the table. He bit his lip and then fetched a deep bowl from the kitchen and filled it with water. He took a handful of clean, well-worn towels as well. Back in the main room, he went and wrung out one of the towels and dabbed gingerly at the gashes in the Anbu's thigh. They were deep, but didn't appear to have nicked the artery. Naruto cleaned off the blood and grime carefully and then grabbed some disinfectant and cleaned them out as best he could. Then he bandaged it. The same process was done to the other cuts and open wounds. Naruto had to sit and think when it came to the broken fingers. He'd stripped the armor and shirt to bandage the burn on his chest, and found two ribs were fractured. Splints and wrapping, the best I can do. He muttered and dug through his supplies to find more gauze to wrap with. The fingers were easier, more obvious to fix. He was extra careful taping the finger out straight and binding the stiff splint between the two to keep them that way. Ribs though, that was outside of his meager knowledge. Open wounds and burns he'd bandaged on himself enough to have at least an idea. But broken ribs were not at all the same. He ended up rubbing a bruised salve on the Anbu's chest and stomach and then wrapping him from the waist up to his shoulders snugly. Naruto then sat back and looked over the man. He was calm enough now to note more details. His hair was shockingly silver and fluffy. The black tattoo on his shoulder marking him as one of the black ops was easy to see, so at least the Jinan knew for certain the man was really Anbu. His mask depicted a hound. And wasn't that humorous, after he'd named his mysterious benefactor hound and Anbu with a dog mask showed up in the middle of the night. Naruto supposed the shinobi had been disoriented and entered the wrong apartment. There was no other reason for an Anbu to visit him. He was just the pariah of the village, who occasionally got into trouble for pranks. Naruto checked the bindings on the bandages again and made sure there were no more wounds he'd missed before. There were none, thankfully. There were a few faded scars on his arms and torso, but surprisingly fewer than expected. The memory of his last visit to the hospital rose up. Medical jutsu things don't leave scars. This guy might just go to the hospital a lot? A jaw-cracking yuan had the blonde boy tiredly tidying up his room. 
getting rid of the bowl of bloody water and putting away all the unused bandages and such. He debated on what to do with the Anbu now. He had no idea what would be considered normal procedure, but this didn't seem much like a normal situation anyway. Dealt with it. He muttered and made a pair of shadow clones to help him lift the unconscious man. Naruto placed him in his bed, tucked in the patched but warm blanket in around him and then curled up in the opposite corner of the room with an extra sweater on. The blonde Janon drifted off to sleep slowly, painfully aware of the soft breathing coming from his bed. Hound woke with a jolt, precisely at 4 o'clock, as he had for more than a decade now. He was instantly aware of his surroundings, or at least he was trying to be aware. He was. Lying down, in a bed, that didn't smell like wet dog, or dust. So. Well then, not his bare apartment then. He didn't move, or allow his heart rate and breathing to shift at all. He was laying down, in a bed with blankets on top. His body had the usual aches and pains from a mission. There was no sound to indicate a hospital, and the cloying scent of decay and antiseptic was absent. Not hospitalized then. Hound could hear the faint sounds of voices and movement. A city, and it smells more like home, so Konoha? Hound let his chakra out just a tad and found that the building he was in, whatever that was, was almost completely empty. There was one maybe two people, he couldn't tell from the amount of chakra alone, nearby. He kept still then, trying to remember what had happened. He could recall entering the village, keeping out of sight as usual. Thinking about the brats, Bear was on duty outside. Iviki, desk, Oshi the papers. Naruto. I went to check on him. The memories ended there. He couldn't even remember if he'd made it to the boy's apartment. Although, the empty state of wherever he was indicated his success there at least. Hound felt he had analyzed the situation more than enough now. So he sat up carefully. He noted the bandages on his chest and arms first. He was indeed in Naruto's home. Kid did a half decent job, he noted, looking down at his hand. He noted that his shirt and armor were gone, but fortunately his mask was still in place. The coffee table had been cleared of books and in their place was his shirt and armor. A slight movement had him snapping his attention to his surroundings. He found the sight that made him terribly adorable. A blonde head was peeking out around the doorway to the kitchen. Wide blue eyes, and a frown completed the picture. Naruto shuffled, clearly uncomfortable. Ah. Um, Aeon Busan? Hound stood and was pleased to note that his legs held his weight remarkably well. He must have recovered enough from his previous exhaustion and blood loss. Naruto edged out from behind the wall. Hound was pleased to note the absence of one glaringly orange piece of clothing. The boy looked fine, Hound noted, paying close attention in light of what he'd seen the night before. There were no visible scars, and while the boy was keeping his distance, that wasn't too unusual, considering Anbu were quite intimidating in general. He would be having words with a few people as soon as possible. But for now, there seemed to be nothing pressing. Ah, well. Ah, great. You're still alive. The boy slapped a hand over his face after the words tumbled out. I I mean. Ah, it's just that you were super pale last night, and I didn't know what to do, but then I just did something. And today I thought of better ideas, but then you were asleep, so. Ah, uh, well I don't know. Aya. Uh, his face was scarlet by now. Hound was smiling slightly behind the mask. Naruto squeaked when he stepped closer. I made breakfast, so. Ah, uh, so why you could eat? I mean, if you want. Hound shrugged and reached out to gather his clothes. A slight nod was enough for Naruto to scurry back to the kitchen. Hound checked over the bandaged injuries, and was pleased with the healing. He'd have to stop by either the hospital or headquarters later, but he'd make it till then. The smell of miso and rice drew him to the small table. Dishes, chipped and mismatched, were set out. Naruto flinched when he turned around to find the Anbu only a few feet behind him. He hurried to set the steaming teapot on the table. I can't make anything fancy, so it's just rice, rolled omelets and miso. Hound shrugged and sat down. Naruto followed suit. The blonde poured them both a cup of his homemade herbal tea and then started picking at his food. Hound, through years of practice, was able to eat without appearing to move his mask at all. Naruto kept his staring to a minimum. As strange as it was, he wasn't going to stare. He knew how annoying that could be. Odd as it was, Naruto wasn't as bothered by the man's quiet presence as he thought. The meal was silent and swift. Naruto cleared off the dishes while Hound watched. Ah, s so, I patched you up as best as I could. B but I d don't actually have, you know, training. So dot so h hospital, or I mean, a doctor should. Ah. Uh. Hound smiled behind his mask. The boy was cute, 
like a puppy. He reached out and patted the blonde head and then took a few steps away. He technically wasn't supposed to initiate contact with the boy, but he could play this off as momentary loss of consciousness. The damned elders couldn't say a word to that. Hound knew he couldn't stay longer though, so he returned to the living room backslash bedroom and gathered his armor and clothes. Naruto had followed him in. Did are you? Gonna be okay? He asked in a small voice. Hound turned and took a step closer. He patted the boy's head again, thinking of his Ninkan. I'll be fine, puppy. Naruto jerked slightly and then frowned. Huh? Before he could question the Anbu, he'd vanished. His window was open and a few leaves drifted in to settle on the table. A scrap of paper was lying on the floor as well. Naruto shrugged slightly and closed the window, re-engaging the traps as he did so. Next he quickly tidied up the room. He had to get to the team meeting soon. He straightened up the bed and finished washing the dishes before coming back to gather up his equipment. He also bent to pick up the paper. A messy scribbled note and a doodle of a dog with a vest decorated the paper sleep more, puppy. Don't read too much at night. Hound Naruto glanced sharply at the newest book, with its note he deemed from Hound and wondered at the probability of two mysterious visitors ending up with the same name. He stood lost in thought for a long moment. The ticking of the clock caught his attention. Ah. Damn it. He had five minutes to get out the door. Training went well, shifting their routine slightly to incorporate some teaching now as well as the endurance testing. Iviki had them working on a few new kata instead of sparring today. The academy basic style is suitable for introductory training, he'd informed them. But for anything more, it is lacking. These kata will help you pin down a style. Shino already has some of his clan style integrated, but you two will need to pick different ones. Shikamaru had bemoaned this for most of the morning. Naruto had been feeling out of sorts, no doubt due to his late night and rushed morning. New Taijutsu, which he struggled with anyway, wasn't helping much. Iviki had noticed, and decided to let him be. It would be interesting to see what would happen. Soon, Shino had migrated over from what had become his area of the grass. He'd waited for Naruto to pause in his kick practice. Naruto. The blonde had looked up. May I offer assistance? The Aburame the waited for a response. After their diner and training the night before, he was even more curious about his new friend and the many oddities in his training levels. Naruto had huffed, but nodded. He didn't want to make mistakes, and he wasn't too worried about Shino using this as an opportunity to take a shot at him. Shino had then glanced over the diagrams on Naruto's kata. Ah, I see. He then slowly moved through the kata with a blonde, pointing out subtle changes. You move your left foot to the side, like this. Why? Because then you can twist your hips and gain more power and balance. Then, step back and to the right here. You will be able to transitions to another step or throw more easily. Naruto hadn't said a word so far. He was focused intently. Shikamaru was watching, but staying put for now. The genius was already working out a more precise plan for their after hours training. Shino went through all of the kata with Naruto, and then watched him go through them twice to check for any other issues. When the brunette was satisfied, he returned to his own practice. H hey, Shino, he turned back slightly. Thanks, that really helped. Naruto had smiled slight, and was shocked to see Shino smile back. The other boy nodded and went back to his own work. Iviki was pleased. This was good progress, in more ways than one, for a new Jinan team. It could take months for some teams to start working as a unit. And here his team was, a week and a half in and already the three boys were much closer. Naruto especially had been growing. The Joni knew that he'd have to start more actual instruction into their team soon, he'd gotten a fairly good read on the three of them. Naruto would need extra help to compensate for what was doubtless neglect in his time at the academy. But, the boy worked hard, much harder than any other Janan, aside from Guy's clone, but Iviki did have limits. He'd seen, unfortunately, how the green-clad pair got when they trained. That was a bit. Too much enthusiasm for him. No. His one slightly traumatized Janan and the two other quiet boys didn't need that. He would start them on some stealth and intelligence gathering. They'd need it as his team. The sooner they realized for themselves what kind of team they were, the better. He may be more comfortable with his kids, but he still had little idea of how to deal with some things. The new kata were put to use when Aviki set them to sparring two on one. Naruto surprised him again when the boys started using kata that were far from the academy style. The more Aviki watched the more confused he became. The style was odd, a mix of speed and raw strength with sharp shifts tossed in. There was something about the style that was familiar, but he couldn't think of what it was. It was well suited to a more battle-like spar. 
Naruto held his own far better than Ibiki had expected. The nature of the style was unpredictable, and yet clearly a learned, intentional skill and not just wild attacks. Naruto was able to shift between the other two boys' attacks quickly, while still getting in some offense of his own. Hold. He called. The three froze, as they had learned to do after a few days with the grim Jonin. Naruto, why haven't you been using this style until now? The blonde looked confused. Uh, isn't it only for multiple people? I can't use it one on one. He answered straight, ignoring his instinct to cower and avoid punishment. Ibiki shook his head. No, you could use it on a single opponent. Where did you learn it? Naruto had shifted a bit, not wanting to tell the man about his cache of knowledge. The same hesitancy had birthed the idea of not telling the Jonin about their extra plans. Ah, uh, well I have a scroll on multi-person battle. It had a few combos and things in it. Ibiki gave him a hard look. I see. I'll work on that with you tomorrow. For now, we are going to move on to something else. Take a 10 minute break, then we will reconvene. The three boys were tired and bruised as they sat in a half circle around Ibiki 10 minutes later. Naruto had ditched his sleeveless jacket and rolled up the sleeves of his shirt. Shikamaru was blinked especially slow, and if Ibiki didn't know his father, he'd have said the boy wasn't going to retain anything from his lesson. Even Shino was showing his tiredness in the slope of his shoulders. What is one of the most important skills for a shinobi to have? The three exchanged a glance. While teamwork would be an obvious answer, I would say resilience is a critical skill. The Aburame answered. Ibiki focused on him. Explain why. Logically, missions can go wrong or become more challenging than first thought. Being able to adapt and continue on to your goal would be imperative. Why? Because you do not have the luxury of stopping or changing your group and plan in the middle of a mission. Ibiki nodded. While that is true, and your reasoning is quite accurate, that isn't what I was after. Shikamaru spoke up then. I'd assume, with the way our team is set up, information gathering and data analysis is a big thing. Trust the Nara to get exactly the right answer. Why? Give me a reason. Shikamaru shrugged and leaned against Naruto's shoulder. The blonde shifted slightly, but didn't push him away. Ma, Shino is well suited to information's gathering, and Naruto as well. The Aburame's key kaiku hives are versatile when it comes to reconnaissance. Naruto is able to cover long distances and is not easily identifiable as a Konoha shinobi. He has the possibility of becoming a jutsu specialist which would lend itself to getting in and out of enemy areas. He also has lots of experience sneaking around, what with all of his pranks. He even got into the Hyuga compound once, so avoiding detection is a strong suit of his. The boy yawned. I plan and piece together data, and I have a very low chakra presence, which aids in stealth. Naruto was pleased to hear that he would be good at something in the eyes of his team. He half wanted to hug the Nara, and half wanted to blush and avoid looking at anyone. Excellent. The three of you are going to start training various methods of intelligence gathering today. As we go through more of them, you will start demonstrating them. The three Janan settled in for the lesson. Their Jonin continued. For now, we will be focusing on stealth and personal awareness. Knowing what is around you and where your body is moving is the first step. You will be going through a parked area several times today, then we will be moving on to something else after lunch. The three nodded and paid close attention to Aviki's explanation of quiet movements and chakra dampening sound. Then he set them loose on the course. Aviki already had his suspicions, there really is a reason the Uzumaki boy was able to prank anyone in the village. He takes to stealth like he was made for it. The way he moves his body is deliberate, calculated. The Jonin would be far more upset with why the boy knows how to move like that if it weren't so useful. It says a lot, when Naruto manages to be quieter than Shino. Aburame are more naturally inclined to silence than most other shinobi, but Naruto has who know how many years of experience on the other boy. And it shows. Naruto knows to avoid dry leaves and brush, he times his steps with a slight breeze and even knows how to move between trees and open areas almost unseen. Ibiki can recall how frustrated Anbu patrols would get when a pre student, wearing eye bleeding orange of all things, could escape their notice, and then outrun them on occasion. The other two boys do well for Janan, but there is always room for improvement, and Ibiki will have nothing less than the best from his team. He pushes them hard for several hours, correcting their mistakes. Each times, it takes a few minutes longer for them to slip up. They broke for lunch, Ibiki taking off to stop in his office. The three Janan curled up together at the training ground. Shikamaru started their discussion with a wide yawn. Man, this is going to be such a pain, but I started a rough outline for some extra work. If we do it right, 
we can start working up our chakra reserves along with some jutsu or other techniques. I thought after training today, we could focus on some stamina building for Shino and I. He leaned back to munch on a rice ball. Shino nodded and pushed up his glasses. This is a good plan. We could alternate what skills we work on. Why? Because each of us has something to help the others with, and the most effective way to evenly build skill is to mix the training. Naruto, feeling more balanced and at ease than he could recall, spoke up next. I can make shadow clones and set them off running for you two to chase. Then we could work on those exercises from last night again. Shikamaru hummed in agreement. K. That will be today. Tomorrow, we could move on to some taijutsu. I don't have many scrolls for that. He rubbed at his nose with a light frown. I, uh. I have a few, I don't know how useful they will be, but I can bring them tomorrow. Naruto offered, reaching out, like Hiruka sensei had encouraged. He could meet their effort with equal measure of his own. They were a team, and he would work to trust them. He was fairly sure, now, that he could rely on these two boys, and maybe even their grim sensei. Shino accepted his offer easily. I can bring some of my clan's kata scrolls, but they may not suit either of you well. Shikamaru just yawned. Ah, uh, well we can at least try right? The blonde mumbled. Sure, I mean, it's a pain to have to work through styles and pick one, but I don't see any way around it. The Nara sighed. The three worked through a few more ideas before they had to start training again. It was only their second time sitting together working in this manner, and yet it already felt familiar in a way. When their Jonin returned, he was carrying a small, plain scroll. We will be moving on to something else new. We have a mission, here in the village. It will not be challenging in the typical sense of the word. I will be giving you all tasks to carry out in addition to the mission though. They all waited somewhat eagerly for him to continue. Training was all well and good, and they had spent plenty of time busily working on sparring and endurance over the past week, but mission were the lifeblood of ninja. You will be painting a house and fence in the eastern civilian area. Naruto choked slightly. Huh? He said in alarmed surprise. Shikamaru was already slumping his shoulders. So those were accurate rumors. d rank chores huh? Great. He groused. Shino had no visible reaction. Iviki let his sadistic Lee peek, internally anyway. Yes. But, as a challenge, you will all be attempting to make as little noise, including talking, as possible. The three boys shared a glance before sighing. All right. So we need supplies then? Naruto asked. Iviki grinned then. A chill swept through the area. Indeed, a two-story house needs quite a bit of paint. Shikamaru groaned again. Ah man, this is gonna be such a drag. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.